two, one. Engines full power and lift off. A through pick. Go Dragon. Go Falcon. Yeah, these things are cool to watch 100% of the time. That is SpaceX's Falcon 9 taking off from the Kennedy Space Center this morning. Always spectacular. The rocket is taking two American astronauts, one Russian cosmonaut, and one crew member from the United Arab Emirates to the International Space Station. Now, the launch was delayed after an engine system derailed on Monday. This time around, it was all systems go. So CBS News space analyst Bill Hallwood can join us now from the Kennedy Space Center there in uh, central, in, in Florida. Um, why was this mission delayed to the middle of the night? Elaine mentioned there were some issues ahead of time, but explain that in further detail for us. Well, sure. Well, you know, the, the problems they had with the engine ignition system really don't have anything to do with when they launch uh, in terms of the timing of it. Uh, what determines when a rocket takes off to go to the space station is where the space station is in its orbit and what the rocket has to do to catch up. And it just turns out that based on where the station was, uh, they had to launch early in the morning to be able to catch up with it. It's a little hard to, to visualize and figure out. It's, it's called rocket science, after all. Uh, but uh, that's, that's normal procedure for these missions. Excellent point, Bill, um, as always. Um, you know, we've been talking a lot in other segments about the tension between the United States and Russia with what's happening in Ukraine. And I wonder, Bill, what does it say that countries like the United States and Russia can seemingly set aside their tensions and conflict and collaborate on these sorts of projects? Because as you look ahead, you know, years from now, perhaps decades from now, space could conceivably be a place where it is going to be a source of more conflict between the two countries. But for now, that hasn't been the case. No, that's right. And, you know, the, 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 in this case, the International Space Station is sort of a special case. It's enormously expensive. It is the major human space program in Russia, as it is in the United States, even though NASA's gearing up for the Artemis moon program as well. Uh, but the space station is a, is a major uh, endeavor. Neither side can operate the station on its own. So if the Russians pulled out, you know, NASA would be hard-pressed to keep the station going and vice versa. You know, and it's interesting. On the political level, you're absolutely right. There's, there's really deep conflicts here and deep schisms between the two countries. But at the working level, among the people in the space program on both sides, they've gotten along pretty good throughout all of this. And, of course, you know, we're carrying cosmonauts up on the Crew Dragon spacecraft. They're now carrying astronauts up on their Soyuz as a, as a normal part of the, of the project. And, and they get along very well indeed. So, you know, it's a good example of cooperation between the superpowers uh, against this backdrop of conflict. And it, it's really kind of a, it's an interesting case. It's hard to think mm -hmm. of anything else that works quite like this, but it works pretty well. And, Bill, it's also an example of cooperation between public and private partnerships, right? These SpaceX missions really seem to have um, yeah. been able to help NASA get back into the game, so to speak, of space travel. Um, speak to us about that and about what's next for that partnership. Well, you're absolutely right. I mean, I would argue NASA's always been in the game, even though they had to pay the Russians to launch our astronauts for a while after the space shuttle was retired. But looking ahead... Uh, you're absolutely right. The SpaceX Crew Dragon capsules that are now carrying astronauts routinely, I hate to use that word with spaceflight, but uh, regularly, I'll say, mm. to the space station, Boeing is getting ready to come online with another commercial spacecraft that will do the same thing. And remember, SpaceX is building the Starship uh, spacecraft that's going to serve as NASA's first lunar lander in the Artemis program. Uh, so it's a very, very busy time. I don't think uh, NASA could do what it wants to do without this uh, commercial component uh, to the space program. And, of course, SpaceX is, I mean, they're rocking it out of the park. They're launching. Matter of fact, we got another SpaceX launch in a couple of hours out in California. Uh, so wow. it's uh, it, uh, never a dull moment. Never a dull moment. And, you know, it is something that is remarkable every single time, as Errol said off yeah. the top. I mean, these feats of technology are so complex, as you say, Bill, nothing routine at all about that. Bill Harwood for us. Bill, as mm -hmm. always, we thank you. Yeah, thank you, Bill.